What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again from Locked On Wizards. The Washington Wizards lose a must-win game at home against the Atlanta Hawks, 114 to 107. We're going to talk about why they lost, how they lost, and we're going to look at a preview for tomorrow's game against the Philadelphia 76ers next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, what's up, Wizards fans? This is your boy Brandon Scott again from Locked On Wizards. Thank you for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. So the Washington Wizards, they lose a must win against the Atlanta Hawks, 114-107. to 107. Must win because... We are slipping farther down the standings, and with this being crunch time towards the play-in tournament slash the playoffs, we have to beat teams like the Atlanta Hawks who stand in our way to reach a prospective 8-6 to six seed. So let's get into it. Um, How did we lose this game? Easy, man. Perimeter defense. Man, I mean, I'm telling you, that the three-point defense was abysmal. You know, again, the, you know, if you look at the Atlanta Hawks, shot 48.4% from three. They did whatever they want, looking at Trey Young shooting six for 10 from the arc. But I mean, you know, but if you look at our, our roster, man, um, Monte Morris coming back into the starting lineup, you know, six points, five rebounds, eight assists. I felt like he played a good game, especially if you look at him and Bradley Bill as far as their steals. Not even talking about DeLon yet, but uh, defensive wise, they played decent. You know, like I said, two steals from him and Bradley Bill. Um, two, Bradley Bill, the real dude, Bradley Bill. Now, efficiency was not the name of the game for him, but, you know, he contributed 27 points, but he did shoot 11 for 24, and he shot one for five for three. So, you know, obviously, look, three-point shooting, he's not that three-point shooter like he used to be. He's more of a mid-range guy, and and like I said, that's cool, but, you know, he's just not that guy from three-point range anymore. But 27 points from Bill. Uh, Kyle Kuzma, 17 points, seven for 12 from the field, one for three from three. And KP. Uh, 22 points, nine rebounds, eight from eight, eight from 18 from the field. So this solid three again, played well, but you know, we're going to look at other factors, but it's not just their performance. There really is reasons for a lot of these losses is the bench, but we're going to get on the bench in a little bit. So Gaff, let's get on Daniel Gafford, the lamb Lord. He continues to impress, man. He continues to impress 13 points, eight rebounds, six for seven from the field. He is really solidified himself as you know, a really good center in this league. Now, obviously, looking at the, you know, how centers, the, the current NBA center is more like KP, needs to be able to shoot jumpers, needs to be able to shoot from the arc, but he's selling to his own, man. He's an old school center and with an old school attitude. I love what I'm seeing from Gaff, man. He really runs the paint. Again, eight rebounds, 13 points. So the starting unit, I felt, played well. Now, you know, obviously, they came out swinging in the first quarter and then we gave up the lead and went back and forth till they, made that run in the fourth quarter but we kept it interesting early man um look so let's get on this bench again and the bench to me is the issue um 10 points from delon right four from six from the field three steals but you know outside of him you know you got seven points from Corey kispert he shot three for seven but you know again man you know this this bench and not having that that score or two off the bench you know denny came in and you know defensive wise he was solid but Five point six rebounds, shot two from five from the field, and Goodwin only played six minutes, zero points. So it was essentially an eight man rotation. And um, oh, here we go. We're gonna get into so before I get back into the three point defense numbers. So again, the, the, this bench has just not been consistent with having that scoring punch to really help out the uh, the score uh, the starting unit. You know, again, you know, ten points from Delon, seven from Kisper. But are we still feeling the lack of scoring from the Ruri trade? Yes, but I think Denny, again, Denny, his game is not to be that score. I mean, I think in Israel, that was his game. You know, he was that guy in Israel there where, you know, they gave him the ball. They said, here, go score, go f- facilitate. And that worked for him. And he played real well in that respect in Israel. But coming to the NBA, his it, the expectations for him are a little different. 
you know, he's not counting on to be that score. Mostly he he's a defensive savant. So if he can add 10 points, 15 points, 20 points, that is a blessing, but that's not a forte. So we're missing that score. Now, as far as a facilitator, you know, passing defense, Denny is the man on that second unit for doing that. But again, we need us. We need another score on this second unit. I don't you know whether they're going to give Quentin Jackson a look. You know, you got that signing, uh, the signing from Australia, Xavier Cooks. I don't know what the ETA is for him coming over, but we definitely need, you know, another defensive three point shooter on the second unit. So, um, like I said earlier, the big reason for the loss, three point defense. So, again, Trey Young shot six for 10. Uh, we're looking at some numbers. You know, if you look at the second unit for Atlanta, you know, Sadiq Bay, three for four from three, uh, Bogdanovich, four for eight. So, the, you know, the perimeter. Our inability to guard the perimeter comes back and heights and haunts us every game. Man, every game we have an issue with perimeter defense, and it's just it's killing us. Because if you look at several other factors from this game, it was actually a closer game. You know, if you look at rebounding, we actually won the battle rebounding forty six to forty three, or they did. Excuse me, they won the rebounding battle forty six to forty three. Offensive rebounds thirteen to seven compared to ours, but point points in paint. We scored 60 compared to 32. We scored 60 points compared to 32. So we were driving the lane. You know, there's a couple good layups, man. I know Bradley Bill had a really nice layup in the third quarter. And that second quarter, Kyle Kuzma had a really nice layup. And, you know, again, Kyle Kuzma, with, the, with his height, 6'10", he's able to drive the lane anytime he wants. You know, so points in the paint was not an issue. It's just rebounding, another issue from the season. You know, we, we struggle with rebounding. Um, now, with points in the paint, with us driving the lane, and collapsing their defense ran to another issue because usually that opens up what open shooters. Our shooters were only able to hit 25.9% of the three point attempts tonight. So we, we did not capitalize on open shots. You know, Atlanta, you got to give it to them, man. You know, you got to give it up to the coaching. You know, they, they made their adjustments from the last time we played them and they had a game plan and they, they stuck to that game plan and they defended us well. You know, they, and the last thing I'm bringing up is that we lost the battle of the benches again. You know, if you look at Sadiq Bay and Bogdanovich, their bench clearly outplayed our bench. You know, Delon, he contributed 10 points, three steals, by by the way. But Kisper, seven points, and Denny's five. We got to do better than that. We got to step up, especially Kispert and Denny, because I think both of those guys have the ability to be really good NBA players. They're really good role players. And Kispert, when his shot's on and his ability to cut, and Denny, with his ability to drive the lane now, and, you know, his defensive attitude, I think they're both – solid pieces off this bench but they have to step it up because this bench unit man you know this solid three is doing her job monte did his job today gaff is doing his job this second unit has to pick it up and the final thing i'm gonna bring up in this game before we move on our inability to guard the pick and roll they picked and roll us to death man <laughs> they did they they just the atlanta does a lot of pick and roll especially with trey to capella a uh, uh, john collins you know we we've had issues defending the pick and roll all season so the problems that lost this game for us is the same problems we have all year, man, which is defense, 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 you know, perimeter defense, paint defense, ro rotational communication on defense, you know, transition defense. We, we are just not a really good defensive team. There's times when we play well defensively, but overall, we're not a very good defensive team. So those are the big reasons for this loss. I think if you look at, you know, yes, pick and roll defense was abysmal rebounding, but if I could pinpoint one thing, which was the reason why we lost this game was the inability to guard the perimeter. So again, 114, 107, we drop a very, very must need win because looking forward, man, you know, we got Philly coming up uh, tomorrow and I'm going to go over the schedule in a little bit, but, and, and the preview for the Sixers game, but look, the schedule does not get easier for this team. It does not get easier again tomorrow. We've got the 76ers. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up the schedule real quick. Let me take a look at the schedule going forward for the Wizards because we are in crunch time. This is, man, we're getting close to playoff time, man. All right, so we have some winnable games, but with the inconsistency, you may, you be the judge of how many of these games. I'm going to go over the next seven games. So tomorrow we got Philadelphia in Philadelphia. Tuesday we have Detroit Pistons, which, you know, on one hand, you want to say it is a winnable game, but um, at Cleveland, home against uh, Sacramento. At Orlando, home against the Denver Nuggets, and then home against the Spurs. So you have a mixture of teams that are lottery teams, i.e., the Spurs, the Magic, the Pistons, and you got some top flight, top tier teams that are playoff ready. We're trying to make a run for actual championship. 
If you look at the 76ers, the Cavs, the Kings, and the Nuggets, which, mind you, the Denver Nuggets are the number one seed in the Western Conference. They're not playing around. So that would definitely be a test. And I guess we'll go ahead and roll out the rest of the schedule. You're looking at Toronto and Toronto, home against Boston, home against Orlando, at New York, home against the Bucks, at Atlanta, home against uh, Miami, and then we round it out at home against the Rockets. So you've got some lottery team matchups, but we're playing some serious teams, man. We've got to get our act together. We've got to find some consistency, man. We've got to find some consistency because presently we are 31 and 36 at the 10th seed and the East. So we're barely holding on to the 10th seed in the playoff seed or play in rather. So if you're barely holding on to the play in, you know, we, we've got to make some moves, man. We've got to really figure this out if we want to make a run in the second half. So before we move on to the preview for tomorrow's night's game against the Philadelphia 76ers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if you if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. It's my go-to. I know it's e-go-to. We both are big fans of FanDuel. I love the parlays. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Just like I was saying, I'm a big parlay fan. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the National Basketball Association. So let's get into tomorrow night's game at six o'clock. In Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love against the 76ers. Now, a pro- prospective starting five for the 76ers, and, and this is a heck of a starting five. Uh, they're going to have James Harden po- starting at the point. It's been his MO for the, the, letter, the later half of his career, sliding over from shooting guard to point guard with his ability to kind of orchestrate the offense. And it goes all the way back to his Houston Rocket days. Um, the two guard, you're looking at Tyrese Maxey, which, again, a, a combo guard who can play point. Play two guard, he can score at a high level. You know, at the three, you're looking at Tobias Harris, a shooter, plays some defense. <laughs> I mean, power four, you're looking at the trusted vet, PJ Tucker. And at center, you're looking at Joel B. So it's not going to be an easy game, man. This is the team that has aspirations to really challenge in the Eastern Conference. I personally think Milwaukee is a favorite with Boston in number two, but you cannot take your eyes off of Philadelphia, man. Philadelphia is a formative team who could make a run in the playoffs. Look, it all could, you know, usually. Your hottest team from the regular season going into the playoffs is usually the team who they make they make noise in the playoffs. And they, they've been playing good basketball lately. So what would be my quick three keys to victory if we have a if we want to have a chance to beat the Philadelphia 76ers? Well, I'm gonna say number one, play hard. Gotta play. You gotta have this. This is the playoff atmosphere type of game. Play hard, get in her face. You know, really, if you got to check them at half court, check them at half court. You know, really get in, in hardened face. Look, MB is the type of guy where he thrives off of attention on defense and attitude. He's going to talk stuff. He's going to do his thing. You're not going to stop Embiid. You, all you can do is contain him and try to contain his supporting cast. And that's going to, that's going to be formidable, man. You got to play hard defense. You got to play in your face defense because Maxi can score. Harden can do his thing. Harris can score. PJ Tucker can defend and he can shoot from three. So number two, play our game. Don't play their game. Their game is to frustrate you and to get in calls. Look, you know Embiid and Harden are going to get the hometown treatment. Harden is probably one of the most well-known players who have the ability to go to the line. He does in the record numbers. He knows how to get calls. He just knows. So play your game, which our game is. When, when we are on our game as far as defensively and we rotate and we communicate and really get back in transition and have some attitude, we're not a bad defensive team. It's just effort and care. You know, and consistency. That has been our MO all year. But play our game. You know, just, just play our game. Don't get caught up in, you know, the trash talk. And like I said, Harden is going to get called. So be smarter on defense. And that really goes down to Gafford, who, you know, Gafford can get in trouble foul wise. They're going to come after him for that reason. They're going to come hard in into the paint. And number three, rise the leadership. To beat a 76ers team, you need leadership because this is pretty much a playoff game. So the question is, who steps up and takes leadership? Is it Bradley Bill or Kyle Kuzma? you got to have leadership. you got to have guys who are going to push guys, you know, to really keep us in this game because this is a hard game. 
you know, Philly is not going to be an easy win for us, especially the fact that we just dropped two to Atlanta and we barely got past a lottery team in Detroit. So right now we're we're hurting a little bit. So this would be the perfect time to punch them in the mouth, come out early, really, really come at Philadelphia. And if we can squeak away with a win, that can give us a little bit of momentum going to the second half because, look, it's crunch time. We're going to, it's coming down to the wire. And right now, the ball's in our court, pun intended, for us to really drive for this plan. Because right now, yes, my my um expectation was a six seed to an eight, but the way we plan the inconsistencies, we're gonna be a playing team, in my opinion. And with a plan, you're gonna have to earn your way in the playoffs. And games like this, one game playoffs are important. So we have to play this game like it's a playoff game. So that is my keys to victory in my preview for tomorrow night's game. Um, excuse me, you know, I know, uh, sorry about last night. I know we like to chop it up after games. Uh, it was Friday night and um, some family things came up, but I want, definitely wanted to get this video out and talk about this loss and talk about tomorrow night's game. So, again, 6 o'clock tomorrow night, the 76ers were in Philly and was trying to get this win. So, that is it, man. Um, I definitely appreciate you guys um, when the video drops. And, um, man must win <laughs> and, and must win we drop but i really think if we play with some attitude we have a chance against philly so again i appreciate everybody man i'll definitely show up tomorrow or don't i mean you show up if you want to but let's, let's, let's watch this game six o'clock 76ers in philly now we are close to three thousand subscribers on youtube so definitely like subscribe Hit that notification button so you know when we drop videos like this one on a Saturday. I, man, I, I definitely appreciate you guys. Um, me and my dude, the real Ed Oliver, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We chop it up on game days and off days alike. Um, wherever you get your podcast, five star review would be much appreciated. Thank you for making Lock the Wizards your first listen today. Now make your second listen game to game NBA every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on Odyssey at YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. And I hope everybody has a blessed, blessed weekend. And again, tomorrow night in Philly, 6 o'clock against the 76ers. Was watch this, was try to give some support to the team and try to get this dub. So again, appreciate y'all, man. And